Hey guys, what's up? It's Dat for Gaming here, and today I want to talk about a pretty widely known subject, and uh, pretty widely talked about as well, and that's why build a gaming PC, as opposed to just custom ordering one online. And I think a lot of people are having troubles with this giant thing going on with Xbox and PS4, and they don't really know what to do, because obviously if you custom order one online it's not going to be as cheap as if you were to per like build it yourself i personally built my own pc and i think it's 100 percent completely worth it and i want to help you guys kind of decide on whether you got like building it is right for you guys and this kind of goes along with my other gaming pc build which should run this game on ultra and it's about the same price as the xbox one without windows or anything else so let's get started. The main thing about building a gaming PC is whether you have the time and patience or not. If you don't have patience, like a lot of patience, then you might want to kind of skip over this because it can be extremely frustrating and you can just kind of jump to conclusions that everything's broken and pretty much get yourself in bigger trouble than you already were if you were in any. Another thing is the time I was talking about. Now, if this is your first time doing it, it's definitely not going to take you three or four hours and with no problems, no little bumps in the road at all. It won't be 100% smooth the first time you do it, even if you do it over like a couple days. For me, it took me probably, if I were to add up the hours, um, I could do it within a good day with breaks for like uh, food and maybe like drinks or whatever. But it probably took me about six hours total, six or seven hours. So it is fairly lengthy, and if you don't have time like that, I actually did it over a vacation. So I had time off of school, and if you have time off of work over that vacation, that works well as pretty much the same. And if you don't have that time, it can pretty much delay the process of building it, probably over a couple days, so that way you're kind of more waiting and whatnot to build your PC and that can kind of be bad in some ways you think it might be good because you're taking more time to go through all the processes but then you're never really where you left off off you're pretty much wherever you are that day and you'll forget the next day or the day after if you can't even get it to it the next day and if you forget then you won't really be 100% knowing what's going on so in my opinion it's good to have about two days maybe three and just kind of sit down and work on it quite a bit another thing I want to talk about and this is more safety and some people aren't really sure I know I wasn't sure personally when I built mine what you need to build a gaming PC I was actually pretty confused I thought you might need like an anti-static mat if you guys don't know what that is it's for usually it's for soldering wires and motherboards and what it does is it makes sure you don't zap anything I thought you might need that because I was so worried about breaking a component and really once I got in there it felt pretty comfortable I actually did some research you don't really need an anti-static mat and you're pretty much fine handling most of the parts just as long as you're not touching them where it says not to touch them in whatever guide you're going by to build the PC. Now, before I get into guides in that concept, I want to talk about what you'll need, like physically need, to build the PC. And it's actually pretty simple. You'll, I just used it, uh, or built it on like a pullout table. And pretty much you just need an open space. It cannot be on carpet. Well, actually it can, but I really wouldn't recommend it. it you're just putting yourself at risk in your giant 1000 2000 however much money you spent on this PC you're pretty much just putting it all at stake on the line when you go and decide to make dumb choices like building on carpet now if you don't have any place without carpet that's when it can be kind of tricky um, you know try and have a grounded place with you as much as you can. I know I was not building on carpet and I'm so worried. I was so worried about it. I'd always go and try and find this grounded pipe that's actually in the room because I did it in a laundry room. And I just touched that every time before 
I went to work on it, and it actually worked pretty well. Um, the, I realized later the chair I was using was metal, and I got shocked by that quite a few times instead of the pipe. But either way, have something metal there for you guys, and you'll pretty much need a screwdriver and some sort of surface to work on. Now the motherboard, in my case, came with a little foam pad, and it what appeared almost to be an anti-static mat. I know it wasn't at all, but it seemed to help. I don't know, in my mind it seemed like it would help. And I pretty much just, every part on from the motherboard, because the motherboard's the first piece, every part on from that, I'd put it on that mat, and I'd use that mat, and it worked pretty well. And that's pretty much it for materials you'll need. Now for guides, I'll put a link in the description to a website where I actually got a magazine and in that magazine is the guide that I went by. Um, the magazine series is called PC Gaming and they just released a new edition called PC Hardware. I really love them. I, I'm actually considering subscribing to their magazines because they actually have really really good content and whatnot. And if you go step by step through that, it's pretty simple, or you can find something on YouTube that's a lot more detailed. I would really recommend finding a good video on YouTube with like a ton of likes, not a lot of dislikes, many, many views. Check the comments, see if they did it right. Uh, see if you can get a video with someone doing the same case as yours as well, because I know that really helps in the guide that I saw, because I, I half went off of a build that this magazine was talking about. I changed some key components, but I I was able to understand it quite a bit more because I knew what they were talking about because I knew where it was, if that kind of makes sense. For instance, if you have a, an extremely small case and you're watching this video on this guy with this full tower gaming case, I mean, what are you going to get out of that? Oh, look, this is where all the parts go in a full tower. I mean, obviously it doesn't vary that much, but it just helps quite a bit if it's relative to size, or the video you're watching, if it's relative to size and relative to your case. I think that's pretty much it. If you guys don't have time, patience, some money, <laughs> obviously, because these things aren't cheap, and a good guide then I'd say just go for it jump right in if you guys want to know you know maybe some good gaming PC builds I'll put one in the description it's pretty good as far as I'm concerned I'm not really sure I'll also put that magazine in the description if you guys want to check them out they also have a couple builds um, in the PC hardware uh, I just I was reading that a little earlier and that's some pretty good stuff check them out and that's it for today thanks and have a nice day